Uh, we're going to start with Juwan. in New York, and so he sent us a recording of his riff. I haven't listened to it yet, so this is going to be this is going to be new to all of us, and it's very windy. So prepare. For okay, that. so I watch a lot of watch a lot of movies, mostly science fiction, and then sci-fi movies. I've noticed a thing where they're looking for somebody. The good guys are looking for somebody. And they're like, uh, hey, we're looking for Bob. And they'll be like, oh, Bob, he's on the he's on the Xandar system. And so wipe cut. They are on the planet. They walk into some random restaurant slash bar. And uh, there he is at a table. <laughs> or like they'll do that little coy back and forth. You know, Bob, don't know him. I mean, like, they have to pay him or something, or they got to threaten him with violence. I just want, there's no way that they go to another planet, and the first place they walk into, Bob is there. There's no way. So all I want is, because, I mean, even when I'm looking for my wife in a Sephora, you know, it takes me, she's shorter than all the rest, so it takes me at least two or three minutes to get there. So, and then, like, if you're like, hey, uh, or you can text your friend, Jack. Jack, he goes, oh, I'm at the CVS. Well, there's over 80, 8,500 convenient locations. <laughs> at least you can go, which one? So that's the other thing. They don't. There's, they need further questioning. Bob's on Xandar. Okay, is it the Southern Hemisphere? Is it the Northern <laughs> Hemisphere? I need to know this. Um, the other thing. The only Slight thing left onto Broadway. Is they have like a montage of them going to different places. <laughs> on Xandar and going, is he there? No? Nope. Okay. Or if they do the wipe cut and they finally get to that bar, though, at least they, one of them could be like, oh, thank God, we've been searching for you for months. I wish we had <laughs> asked them what continent on this planet we could have searched on. So that's all I want. I just want somebody to acknowledge the fact that it probably took a little bit longer than a hyperspace jump and a wipe cut to get to Bob. <laughs> <laughs> I like the GPS voiceover yeah. while he's trying to find Bob. That That's seemed right. appropriate. It is true that even even if you take it out of that realm, it's it's amazing how easily people find each other just on this planet. You know, they'll right. go to he's in Boston. You know, all right, and off they go to Boston. Right, and they just find him. It's like sitting there going, "Yeah, Bob's in Ohio." All right. <laughs> Have you been to Ohio? It's pretty, you know, it's a big place. There's a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Looking how for many Bob. places could there be in Ohio, really? And how many Bobs? <laughs> like, there's only one Bob, too. They put the word science in front of fiction. And so <laughs> it's not it's not fiction fiction. It's science <laughs> fiction, which means that there's some aspect of reality that is, that is correctly represented. Mm -hmm. Instead of doing magic... They have science where they can teleport and they can, right. you know, they can, they can scan a planet and find Bob on it. Um, that's all, it's all magic. Well, you know what the interesting thing is? He says, that's the good guys. The bad guys can't find anybody. That's they can't find, they can't find their butt with two hands. They find them. And a lot of times they don't even know what the person looks like. They, right. They just know a name and a place and they still... Still locate them. Hello, stranger. Are you Bob? <laughs> I like in the uh, in the spy movies, the secret agent movies, where they're trying to find their contact person, and there's always a password, and it's always some convoluted phrase that sometimes goes back and forth. You know, well, the upper side of the city is where you'll find the best marmalade. Only if you bring <laughs> your own toast and jam. <laughs> and why do you need to have that many? Is it right? Are they going to get one of the phrases right and not right. the other one? How, I mean, how, lo how long does this dialogue have to go before you confirm? Right. You got to take a, like a, an SAT in order to, to make sure it's them. But first, a questionnaire. Uh, I, for one, and I think most modern individuals would really struggle with the scenes where the dying person is giving is giving these coordinates or this address or this thing. Like, I can't, like, you just going to tell me once? Like, I'm not going to remember that. <laughs> like, that's, that's gone. I, ben. I, I wasn't even listening to what you said. I was just focusing on that little piece of spittle on your on your cheek. Did anybody get that? I'm, 
that happens a lot in mm-hmm. in all kinds of movies where they dispense the information one time mm-hmm. and then they're like got it and then stuff yeah. blows up and and mm-hmm. people try to kill them and everything and then and they still remember yeah. 16 digits right. and that's while they're fiction. whispering, while they're whispering, like and bullets are flying. <laughs> yeah, like got it, got it, <laughs> <laughs> got it, got the combination. It was one. <laughs> yeah, that it would be uh, that. Would, that would. I've never seen that scene in a movie where they rattle off all the information. He goes, wait, what, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then they repeat it, and he goes, "Man, you're going to have to." No. Can you write that down? down? Stop bleeding yeah. for a second. Just stop bleeding. You're, no, you're bleeding on the note. I, I need to see this. Right, write this down. Any, any way you can text that to me, Bob? Does anybody have a pen? And then you go to get one and he's dead when you come back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> an EpiPen. <laughs> All I have is an EpiPen. I was watching a uh, spy movie and the submarine was sinking. They blew up the submarine and it had this device in it for, you know, decoding all of the messages and whatnot. And as the ship is sinking, the entire crew is drowning and they're trying to pull the self-destruct button on that machine, you know, to keep it from falling into enemy hands. And I'm like, there's no way that you'd be trying to get out of the boat, right? You wouldn't be, yeah. all of those people wouldn't be giving their last breath to just, oh, wait, I just, I just got to log out. I just got to log out of the computers. The building's on fire. Hold on. I just got to shut down right. and save this document. Hold on. Destruct buttons are things you only see in movies. Like, I feel like we need right. more of those in real life. Are there any devices in real life that no, will destroy that themselves if you, you know? That needs to be an iPhone 18 thing. <laughs> what sort of a thing, what sort of devices would you put a self-destruct button on? A cat. A cat. <laughs> Strap a self-destruct button yeah. on the cat. The Plus, cat that knows all my you secrets. You got one chance, Tabby. Nope. <clears throat> I do uh, like the, the juxtaposition of the space movie and finding the guy immediately to him in Sephora. He can't find his wife. Right. Right. <laughs> and then he has to have the same conversations the way they would in the space right. movie. Looking for someone. I have to go up to like the front desk and slide him with like a hundred dollar bill. You have your wife's picture. <laughs> have you seen her? He's showing it around. That would actually be pretty funny if you went into some like a Walmart or Sephora or whatever, and you had a you had your wife's picture, and it's like, okay, have you seen this woman? And because who does? Nobody does that, right? And you're like, no, what happened to her? Well, she was here a few minutes ago, and now I went to the bathroom, and I <laughs> that's that's what I'm saying. See this woman? I'm I'm looking for. Her. It'd be fun to do with just like a picture of Elmo that you slide over. Yeah, exactly. Um, have you uh, have you heard of this place called Sesame Street? Can you tell me how to get there? I have a, I have a short premise, um, and that is the 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 statement. This is the greatest thing since sliced bread. The best thing since sliced bread. I wonder what was the best thing before sliced bread when they had when they had just regular bread. Before somebody somebody invented slicing, did they go? This is the greatest thing since tearing a hunk of bread out of the loaf. <laughs> this is the greatest thing since bread. <laughs> That's what it was. It was it was just bread. What other thing? Before there was a whole bunch of great things. What did they have to this, compare it to? This is the best thing since baked bread. <laughs> it's just since remember it used to just be yeast water. <laughs> and now, yeah. now we have bread. But of all of the things that you could compare it to, all of the great things that have happened since the invention of slicing, <laughs> and we still go back to slicing as it's like the one that's this still is, the premium. Nothing else. Yeah. Nothing this is the else best has thing been since, better. <laughs> this is the best thing since not dying of tuberculosis. <laughs> no, no. Bread. Okay, I gotcha. Uh, skip over. <laughs> Uh, uh, centuries of innovation and progress and go right back to slicing bread for right. it as the thing. Right. That like this like is the, the best pinnacle. thing since a cell phone. <laughs> right. Like you could start there. Like cell phones are amazing. This is the best thing since <laughs> right, wireless internet. That. No. This is the greatest thing since it just since telecommunications. It wouldn't even have to be a cell phone. Mm-hmm. We don't even do that. We go all the way back to sliced bread. <laughs> <laughs> this thing, this thing I'm holding has all the knowledge in the human history in the world <laughs> right here. And this little thing, sliced bread. 
Not as good as sliced bread. <laughs> sliced bread. I'm trying to imagine how revolutionary sliced bread must have been to completely redefine how we determine what's good for the, for the rest of human history. And who are, who are against it though? Where when they like finally rolled it out, they're like, "Look, it's we have sliced bread." No. Uh, you no. know they're going backwards though. Like the trendy thing is the whole unsliced bread. Whereas the sliced stuff in the bag is just sort of the poor people stuff. So you think we're going I think we're we're headed yeah, the best thing since unsliced bread. Since not slicing bread. Right. This, is, this is the best thing since unsliced bread right. loaves. We, we call it artisan bread now, but really it's just old <laughs> bread. Bread 1.0. The fancy yeah. bread just isn't cut. You just right. just leave it in its raw form. The baker was just lazy. <laughs> eh. Artisan. <laughs> yeah. Maybe yeah, so what? Well, that was it. When they first sliced the bread... Then they had, what did they compare that to? Well, this is the best thing since, yeah, wheels this is or the fire. <laughs> this is the best thing since knives. <laughs> this is the best thing since sharp metal. I've noticed I'm not, I'm not intimidated by a lot of things. I'm pretty secure in my manhood. Um, there's one exception, and that is when I shake a man's hand and it's really meaty. <laughs> Like, have you experienced that? Like, it's like shaking a cooked chicken breast. It just envelops. Like, I can't even do a full close around, and it's super intimidating. It's like, it's like, are you wearing a baseball glove? Like, I don't, I don't even. How do you work out your palm? I don't. How do I even get that? Your palm has abs. <laughs> right. Uh, so that, that it, not not a beard, not muscles. It's that intimidating man hand. I don't know if I should shake it or curtsy. It's emasculating. <laughs> Big beefy mitt. You know what I'm talking about. You've, yeah. sh you've, shooken, these, shooken, you've shaken these hands. These yeah. monstrosities. It's just, uh, just a big thick hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So do you have a, do you have any techniques for um, Yeah, what do you do? For, for not letting on that you're intimidated or or can you tell, can he tell that he's intimidating you or do you like, what do you do? I, I don't, they probably aren't thinking anything of it. Just lock eyes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I can't even give a firm handshake because I can't get my hand enough around it <laughs> to squeeze. Your hand's you going the comment. other way around. It's like it's bending. <laughs> right. right we'll you just, can't comment yeah. on it. You can't go, Whoa, that's a big old beefy hand. You got <laughs> you know, what if he's insecure about it? What if he has the opposite problem he, and he wants a less meaty hand? Hi, I'm what a fat hand. <laughs> <laughs> what a fat hand you have, sir. That's, uh, to, you, you just ignore it? Just ignore no, it? No, I think about it for a long time, but I don't <laughs> say anything. I tell you. That's the reason you don't remember people's names. No. <laughs> <laughs> You're silently judging handshakes yeah. the whole time. Yeah. He does, as he's saying his name, he's just gauging the breadth and width of his hand. And that's what, it. What's your name? Meat Hand? Meat Hand. Nice to meet you, Meat Hand. Oh, Wyndham. Is... Wyndham. Sorry. Your name's Wyndham. It's it's Paul. Oh, I thought you said Palm. <laughs> so what I'm is the gonna... opposite? Uh so what happens when you get somebody with like dainty hands or they get the like the the limp handshake or like the I want to break every bone in your hand like the crushing um I'm not intimidated by a squeezer that to me is an insecurity thing like they're trying to make up for something but it's mm. the just normal handshake from a thick tree trunk fingers that's just I don't know now what if they're missing fingers that's also intimidating because <laughs> that's happened yeah that's mm -hmm. happened and you you need to be prepared for that you yeah what do you do right. when you're doing a handshake and you both don't fully engage before it starts then it just like, becomes like a little it, yeah like <laughs> yeah. you can't break it off and re-engage that's awkward but it's also awkward to to just fundle around with the fingers then right. you just it's do like, like the a, that's why i just hug instead of handshake anyway shouldn't should people who have uh 
remarkable hands in some way, um, out of the ordinary hands. Would it be polite for them to announce that to sort of give you a heads up? Like if they're if they're coming in for a handshake, it's like, hey, I have really thick hands. Nice to meet you. Just so you so it doesn't take you by surprise. Hmm. Hey, my palms are covered with warts and lesions. <laughs> <laughs> my hands are the same consistency as sandpaper. You shake their hand and you come back and you're like bleeding. You're like, what is I have some open wounds on my hands. <laughs> You're about nice to feel to 50 you. years of hard labor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's coming in. Now, I have so there's some guys at church that will start a handshake and then yank you in for a hug. Yeah. I'm never ready for that. It always catches me <laughs> off guard. That's not just... really a handshake at that no, point. No. That's, more that's a... sort of a that's an opening move in a wrestling match. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's an opening that is a scorpion from Mortal Kombat. Get over here! It's, it's a fairly dominant move. Just yank another human into you. So so you should, uh, how do you respond to that? Because you're a hugger, right? You just keep yeah. hugging and, and then they let go and you just pull them in closer. Oh, that's how I would respond. You, you pull me in. This. You Yeah, exactly. You want, you want dominance? Okay, you pull me in, you're getting a hug. I'm all for it. I just don't like the tease of the handshake. It's like, why did you even tease the hand? Like, just come in for the hug. Don't trick me. You don't like the or, deception. Yeah. Or the the only thing that seems to be a problem is the girth of the hands. It's not. It's during a handshake. <laughs> yeah. Not the hug. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I, it seems to me there should be certain certain rules of protocol if it's going to be unusual. If you're planning to pull somebody towards you, you should say, hey, I got to warn you, I'm a yanker. <laughs> <laughs> to give them so that they'll know. And it's not a surprise. <laughs> uh, now, you don't have small hands, Brian. I can tell from here that you would be an intimidating shake. But now you know. So <laughs> next time, just, just be forewarned that... Uh, okay. You would be an intimidating shake, Brian. Girl hands. Yeah, I, I, I don't like, I don't like to like crush your knuckles, like the squeezers. Like, hey, you know, I, I need my hand for later. Can you just save that? I'm supposed to have four fingers, not one. So stop trying to push them together. Well, there is a, and a thumb. There was a thing a few years ago, I guess, a few generations ago, where the firm handshake was the test of you know, a person's trustworthiness and integrity that was all communicated by a single handshake. Mm -hmm. And and so you still have some residuals of that. I think people are like, well, this handshake is going to determine everything. This is the first impression. You're going to, you're going to make all your judgments about me based on this handshake. And so I'm going to tick all of the boxes. It's going to be firm. I'm going to make eye contact. I may pull you in a little bit to demonstrate that I'm not averse to, you know, being close in proximity. Also to let you know that I have some strength of my own. And all of that is communicated, you know, through a handshake. So it's a big deal to a lot of people. I'm imagining two different people meeting up. Like, I have arthritis. Don't squeeze hard. I have meaty hands. It's okay. (laughs) Have you eaten gluten I have, recently? I don't. Yeah. I have arthritis. I have a powerful grip. We should probably just wave. <laughs> I do like that your palm, your palms have abs. I think that's, a funny <laughs> that's where we started. Hey, let me introduce you to John. <laughs> because I've had the time of my life. That's the only thing that appeals to me to boxing is that I could do the clinch. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep really clinching. The clinch. I've mastered the clinch. Is there a? Uh... That's how he makes a name for himself. <laughs> that's that's definitely his specialty. There, they should have like a, a hugging championship, hmm. like hugging. You know, judge that. But yeah, uh, last one to let go. Loot. You know, wins. Oh. Um, hmm? I, I, I like. I it. think there's. Well, there's people that hang on too long. There's people that. Make you should make noise. Go too, too soon. I mean, there's people that you 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 don't even have a chance to to get your hands down, and you're ba- mm-hmm. it's almost like a, it's not quite a high five because it's not like this, but but it's like oh, I guess we're done. And then there's people who kind of throw your hand, you know, like they don't, 
not overhand, maybe, but they'll sort of toss away. it away. Mm. You know, they give a firm shake and then they mm. cast it aside like like a crushed beer can. <laughs> but I keep going back to that guy who pulls you in and you don't let go. Yeah. Then you just start adding noises. I start and you, wrap, you wrap yeah. your legs around yeah. him. <laughs> oh, this is soft. This is a soft shirt. Oh, this is... <laughs> Bet you'll think twice about pulling somebody in from now on, won't you? Is this cotton? This is nice. Mm, that's, that's nice aftershave. That's yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, right. orchestra conductors. Are they really needed? I wondered that myself. You have like the world's most incredibly talented musicians. Like can play any piece of music. And first of all, the guy up there looks like you know. I don't know how they did it. They went to like you know, Beethoven or somebody, and they're like, you know, we, we really like your music. We love your concerts, but you know what we want? You see that crazy guy out front that looks like he's swatting flies? We're going to bring him in and just give him a couple of sticks, and he's going to lead the whole thing, right? Because, like, like, if he wasn't there doing this, are they going to be like, I don't know how to play, you know? Like, again, they're the world's, like, best musicians, and they they're just they need this one guy to be like, and he looks if if you if you look at him he looks like he's the um he looks like he's recounting a fight that he had with his wife like he's like all <laughs> and he's just trying to like reenact the whole thing like he's trying to figure out how he lost the argument he's like mm-hmm. do they have to go to a special teacher for that to learn to learn the stick <laughs> i mean from what i've learned cuz i did kind of research it a little bit one of them is the timing one of them is one hand is strictly timing and there can be like one, two, one, two, three, and or one, two, three, four count usually. And then the other one is are there people making who are shadow only, puppets. Are there people who are only fans of the conductor and they're watching him be like, oh, that was a good one. <laughs> yeah, Did you yeah. see that swipe? Yeah. That was well done. Look at how he called on the, the violins. Ooh. <laughs> He's the best. Well, <laughs> If you uh, you haven't played in a band, have you, Brian? I have. <laughs> have you? Okay, no. <clears throat> like an orchestra like that? No, not in an orchestra. Well, somebody has to get the thing started, you know. Otherwise, you're just going to have people standing up. Yeah, going, well, it's the drummer. Know, we... The drummer goes. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's it. You just get a hard, get a heavy metal drummer for the, an orchestra, and now here's <laughs> Tchaikovsky. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right, but that's, yeah, that, that's one way they could do it. But I think that they, you know, the, the conductor's the focal point, brings every, gets everything started, and then that's really it. He doesn't really need to stand there. But but then what? What's he going to do then? Just like do this, and then take <laughs> off, <laughs> sit there, have a smoke, you know, while they finish playing. <laughs> Brings out like a starter pistol for like, just, <laughs> here we go. Mark, sit. <laughs> and then the orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes and waits until the song is over. And yeah. he comes out and gets him started on the next song. And he's back. He's got a chair off to the side. He's reading, drinking. <laughs> he's drinking, maybe watching TV. <laughs> You know, he's got to do something to right. look like he's... Well, that's like the thing. Like, are they needed? He's yeah, got to do something, start? but... Again. How are they know how to, the orchestra's going to start? Somebody has to be in charge of that. <laughs> Somebody has to get him started. They can't have a little timer or a little thing. Three, two, one. <laughs> just, just, yeah, but somebody has to do that, too. I think it's like a magician where 90% of what they do isn't needed and isn't actually the <laughs> trip, but they have to do everything else. Otherwise it's pretty boring. Well, yeah, it's misdirection too. I mean, some of that's yeah. misdirection, but yeah. Although that, okay. So now let's take the orchestra leader and have him be a magician. So he's doing this. And then all of a sudden he pulls like a rabbit out of his, his hat or, you know, right. like, or his wand all of a sudden now flowers come out of the top of the wand. Like mm-hmm. now, now we're into something. I've never I, seen I, that before. I think, I think the direction that you might go with this is is the opposite of of that because the premise, you know, what are those guys needed for? Is um, you know, p- people would be expecting that because lots of people have made that observation, and it's people who don't know 
how orchestras function um, because they go, that means he's just standing up there waving his hands. He's like, no, he's actually not. He's keeping right. time. Right. You know? And so in order to, in order to do that, you, you have to have some knowledge of music and how all of that works. And so maybe, maybe you actually make fun of people who are, what's he doing up there? He's just standing up there waving his arms. And he's like, well, if you notice, yeah, you notice that he's waving his arms and the music is in perfect synchronization to him waving his <laughs> arms. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever noticed that, but um, that's a... I wonder if it's compulsive when he's in other situations, like if he's doing that at Subway to his sandwich order. Lettuce, <laughs> tomato. Yeah, put the mayo on. <laughs> right. There you go. Well, well, I like maybe, to maybe I, could I, extend I, it to other people who are not actually producing music. You know, like what about people who clap? If they go to a concert and they clap along, it's like, why are you doing that? That's not that's not doing anything. Well, what really annoys me is when you go to a concert and then the band's like, now you sing, and I'm like, no, I came here to hear you, not this. Dr if I want a drunken karaoke, I'd go to the bar. <laughs> yeah, what does he What does he do up there? So, what other What other times would that skill? What other times would you Was need? he a traffic cop? A and... traffic cop. <laughs> like, you know. He'd be a house painter. Yeah. Uh, a sheet, sheet folder. Tablecloth spreader. <laughs> does, does, does he do it at home? Like, all right, kids, I need you over here. And, <laughs> and up with the sheets. Or if he's in an argument with his wife, he's like, can we bring it down? Like, <laughs> just the, the tone. <laughs> Tries to make it softer. Like, if he's married to a musician... Maybe that works, you know, they're in an argument and he starts getting raised, heated up and he's like, no, bring it. And now it's your turn. It would be funny if you, mm -hmm. if you got signed up for music therapy and it was just this guy trying to help you manage <laughs> your emotions, who like a, like a NASCAR flag man, like they, there's an actual technique right. to it and a science to it, I guess. But I wonder if they aspire <laughs> to be music. It's with doctor. the wrist. They just didn't make it. That's that's funny that you're doing it wrong. You know, can you can you imagine? Would there be a lower point in your life than to be told that you're not waving that flag correctly? <laughs> <laughs> would there be a, a lower place you could sink to than incorrectly waving a flag? <laughs> and how poorly are you doing it where it, it, they won't understand what's happening? Right. More wrist, less finger. Yeah, that I would just—if I was on stage, I would just grab the mic stand and <laughs> what's he waving like he's trying to, you know, hail down a, a plane on a desert island? Right, right. You wave the flag, and everybody immediately drives off into the center <laughs> yeah. field into a big pile. Whoa, wow! It's like that's your, that's on you, man. You gave the crash into the center field flag <laughs> wave it's similar to the guys with the airplane flashlight things they have their own moves they have to they're that that'll that will work like if he what if you incorrect go back to the conductor what if he <laughs> incorrectly does it what would the consequences be would they everybody gets up and puts their instruments away and walks out it's like, oh. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, like what, what sort of gesture could he make and what would it cause? It would cause them to play like, I don't know, uh, Cardi B or something like that. The brass, the brass section stands up and smacks everybody in the head <laughs> in front of them. They don't know what they're doing. Yeah. You gave just... the... Or if he had epilepsy and was just seizing, what would happen? <laughs> Is that how metal music was born? <laughs> that's a premise yeah you know like incorrectly with incorrectly conducting and you you do the wrong gestures and it causes pandemonium to ensue or create something new changes the whole song like yeah you do the, and they immediately start playing the wrong song. there's that they they can't play beethoven's fifth without somebody sitting there swatting at flies what if you're blind does somebody actually have to hit you <laughs> to get you <laughs> Like, seriously, you're not going to be able to follow the traditional conductor. Guess you're going to have to know the music. Anybody, <laughs> But how will you in, start? <laughs> anybody who is in youth orchestra knows that the conductor, you have to learn to watch the conductor. And 
when you're a kid, I remember our band leader was like, you guys have got to watch me. You got to watch me. And so there's some ego sort of where it's like, you will, you will watch me. You will, everybody will look at me. The only guy that can get away with that. The only guy that can get away with demanding that you pay close attention to him <laughs> or else. Mm -hmm. But yeah, is there like a, a power structure? Are there like, you know, like John Williams, obviously, but are there are there like power structures of like battles over over spots in the in the conducting world? I'm, I'm sure there is. Probably. It's like anything else, you can't just be anybody. You can't just stand up there and wave your arms. Do they have like tryouts, head to head conductor competitions? Yeah, like a rap battle. Do they have conductor mm -hmm. battles? He goes like this, and then he points at the other guy, and he comes flying in and starts <laughs> directing him and points back. Are there, different back levels, are there different levels of the sticks? Like, are there your beginner sticks, and then all the way up to your, like, dragon heartstring sticks? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs>